Because of phrases like, it's not rocket science, many people interested in aerospace engineering are turned away by their own perception of how difficult and complex it is. Unfortunately for them, they'll miss out on the exciting, sometimes mind-boggling, and always interesting world of aerospace engineering. Hi, I'm Eric Hillsberg, and in this video, I will answer the question, what is aerospace engineering? Let's start by taking a look at what goes into the design of a rocket. Three, two, one, lift off. Modern rockets weigh millions of pounds and stand as high as a skyscraper, and they need to withstand immense forces during launch. Materials scientists and structural engineers create and select the lightest possible materials that can get the job done. This means predicting and measuring the stress, strain, and heat that every component will go through during the course of the mission. Fuel makes up about 80 to 90% of the weight of a rocket before launch, so the structural engineers need to work closely with the propulsion team. Experts in thermodynamics, mainly mechanical and chemical engineers, work to balance the weight and power of the propulsion systems because any extra weight means less delta V. If you want a rocket to reach its destination, the weight needs to be significantly less than the thrust of the engines. And once the rocket starts moving, an additional force is added to the equation, drag. Figuring out how much this will be is the job of the aerodynamicists. The Earth's atmosphere consists of particles of gas with a quadratic drop in density with increasing altitude. This means that as the rocket accelerates through the air, the drag force increases with speed, but decreases as the rocket ascends through the atmosphere. So careful attention to the shape and surface of the exterior is important for efficiency. Drag isn't all bad though. It also allows us to point and stabilize the flight with aerodynamic surfaces, like fins. Oh, and did I forget to mention that the forces, vibrations, and heat generated from the propulsion system and aerodynamics reverberate throughout the structure of the rocket. I'm sure you're wondering by now, how will we actually steer the rocket and get where we want to go? Well, a computer and electrical system. This is the job of the control and avionics engineers. Using software, sensors, actuators, and more, these engineers work with all of the other teams to learn to control the dynamics of the rocket. This is just the tip of the iceberg, but I hope it's now apparent why aerospace engineers need to work with engineers from many domains to ensure their vehicles will be able to complete their mission. It's practically impossible for engineers to have the depth of knowledge needed in every area, so most aerospace engineers become experts in one of six domains. Aerodynamics, propulsion, orbital mechanics, GNC, avionics and electrical systems, and structures. When most people think of aerospace engineering, they think of aerodynamics. This is a subdomain of fluid dynamics that involves gases. Aerodynamicists will design anything exterior to the aircraft or spacecraft that touches the atmosphere. They can do this through mathematical calculation or experimental testing. The mathematics quickly become too complicated for human brains to efficiently evaluate, so computational fluid dynamics, or CFD, is the most common way to mathematically calculate the forces like lift and drag. You may have seen these colorful and beautiful CFD visualizations on the internet. On the other hand, experimental testing is commonly done in wind tunnels with scaled down versions of the design, where forces can actually be measured on the body. Sometimes water vapor or smoke is used to be able to visualize the movement of the airflow around these scaled models. The second thing most people think of when they think of aerospace engineering are rockets and jets. These are what make aerospace vehicles go the propulsion methods. Propulsion engineers are experts in thermodynamics, fluid dynamics, and mechanical engineering. Most propulsion engineers fall into one of two subdomains, air breathing and non-air breathing. Air breathing engines are used mostly on aircraft that make use of the oxygen in the air for combustion, which allows them to be more efficient. But because of this, they're limited by altitude. Modern aircraft engines can compress the atmosphere enough to get pretty high and travel quite fast, but to reach orbit, non-air breathing engines are needed. These engines carry their own oxygen for combustion, which enables high thrust, but they're less efficient 
meaning more of the weight of the vehicle needs to be fuel and oxidizer. Orbital mechanics is the study of motion at the massive scale of space. Spacecraft orbits follow the laws of celestial mechanics, and because of the large space and time scales of space travel, the propulsive maneuvers of their engines are usually approximated as ballistic. This means that they are treated as an instantaneous change in velocity. When designing missions, engineers and astrodynamicists must apply orbital mechanics to design and predict the motion of their spacecraft. GNC stands for Guidance, Navigation, and Control. These are the essential steps of the feedback loop required to control the movement of vehicles. This is not limited to aerospace and also includes automotive, ship, and robots. Guidance refers to the process of finding the desired path of travel from the current location. Navigation is how we find that location. And control is how we manipulate the forces like steering and thrust in order to execute the guidance commands. Most aircraft have navigation and control systems, with pilots acting as guidance in the loop. But autonomous aircraft are becoming more common. Spacecraft include a full GNC system for onboard autonomy, but they can also be controlled from inside or on the ground. The underlying nervous system, which allows for GNC and other onboard communication and computation, are the electrical systems and onboard computers. In aerospace vehicles, these are commonly referred to as the avionics. These systems vary greatly from vehicle to vehicle, but are highly redundant to ensure that any one failure will not cause the vehicle to stop working or worse, crash. Last, but certainly not least, aerospace structures. Because of the immense weight and forces aerospace vehicles undergo, the materials that make up the structure must be carefully selected. They have to be lightweight and strong. And frequently, they also bend, so understanding how much and where is important to feed the GNC and aerodynamic teams. And that takes us to the end of the six domains. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. I hope you now have a better understanding of the incredible world of aerospace. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. I'm Eric Hillsberg, and together we're going to build up the understanding and intuition needed to get you started on your path in aerospace engineering. See you next time.